Hello, good evening. Back for another question and answer video. Today's question isn't exactly a question. It's a bit of a request for help. And this person wants help on ending well, wants help on their practice, really. Wants help on overcoming doubt, specifically. This person has doubt about their ability to control the mind, train the mind, uh, when there is no I. They see that thoughts are out of their control and emotions pop in and out on their own. So what the heck can we do? What the heck? It seems paradoxical, they say. Right? You should try to control the mind when the mind itself is not self. And there is no nobody do, able to control. Hmm? So the general topic is on the self. The existence of the self, the belief in the self, practice based on one's beliefs in self and so on. There are a lot of theories about self. People say the self exists. Other people say the self doesn't exist. Theories of soul. Theories of free will and determinism, that's what this person talks about. there's free will, who has the free will, if there's determinism, well then what? Then nothing, I guess. Lots of theories, but um, base, in spite of all these theories, and, and, and even not just theories, but outlooks, beliefs, views, perceptions, for some people, I think it's not even a matter of having a theory or even um, a set view or belief. But yet we have a very, very strong and ubiquitous. Everyone has these perceptions uh, of self, of control, of possession, of, of entity, uh, of existence, of I, of ego. And so I'm not going to answer any of them. I'm not going to give you my theory. Because what I want to point out is that theories do just this. They cause doubt. They cause uh, certainty or uncertainty. And that certainty or uncertainty has ramifications. Here we have an example. This person who asked the question uh, has doubts. And so that's the result. The result of their uh, state of mind in terms of their perceptions of regarding views, uh, regarding self, have led them to doubt, to a state of mind that is, um, we say unwholesome. But unwholesome just means it's, it's not very useful. You know, when you're when you're doubting things, well, there's not much you can do. You can't act upon doubt. Doubt doesn't lend itself to strength of mind, fortitude of mind. Conviction does. Conviction allows us to do all sorts of things, good and bad. If you believe in uh, violence, then you'll be you'll be very good at being violent. If you believe in meditation, you'll put a lot of effort into meditation. But doubt, well, doubt is a result. Um, for other people, there's a conviction in their views. Uh, and so, following in the Buddhist tradition, rather than offering a theory of self, I will follow the Buddha's um, example and talk about what happens when you believe in self. The Buddha said to his monks, in probably the closest he ever got to 
giving an answer to this sort of a question is uh, he said monks this is what I tell you to do hold on to any belief in self that doesn't cause suffering so that's my advice to you and if, do you see such a view monks he said, they said no we don't see such a view but said good good I don't see such a view either when you believe in self any belief in self causes stress and suffering and so this is what we see this is what we try to first off point out that when you believe in an I then it leads to conceit it leads to uh, ego it leads to uh, possessiveness it leads to craving it leads to anger it leads to manipulating others we try to get things that we want we we fear and um, are jealous and stingy about our possessions the things that we say I uh, own we're afraid of losing we're afraid of loss we're afraid of um, change right if uh, if we were to lose a limb because it's our limb right because of our perception of self causes stress and suffering when we have any kind of pain when we have any kind of pleasure our attachment to these things is very much tied up bound up with uh, me and mine and I well, not to mention our conceit and our, our arrogance, our ego and egotism. Uh, when we uh, cling to the idea of self and, and compare ourselves with others, when we become arrogant and don't believe that we deserve such things or we, we do deserve this, we don't deserve that, when we hate ourselves. So, one important thing that Buddhism stresses is pointing out the evils of clinging to these sorts of views. But there are evils of clinging to a view of determinism as well. So we're not trying to, or, or we don't work in such a way as to provide an answer to even the idea of determinism or free will. That activity of trying to find a, an answer or of um, seeking out an answer has consequences right so a person who believes in determinism the the, the truth of it is not the question the result of it is the question when a person holds that view right, when that view if you want to look at it from purely experiential points or experiential point of view uh, when when that view arises in the mind it's go there, there are going to be other states of mind that arise based on it right? the, they can't be avoided so it's kind of deterministic um, but you can see what the result is and so what this points to is a very different way of looking at reality that Finding truths in this in, in 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 this particular sense of the, um, the what exists or the existence of something and the the nature of those things, right? Like, what would we say is deterministic? What would we say has free will? We're referring to something. And all of that is uh, a, a poor way of looking at reality. It, it doesn't really get to reality. It, it, it overlooks something. Because again, it, it, become, it, it deals, it's within the framework or within the realm of theory. Right? All that happens, all that can happen in regards to free will and determinism is you develop a view based on them based on one or the other uh, and and the reality that's working behind the scenes 
of experiences is going to uh, uh, change you know, based on that view. And neither one, the person who is deterministic, of course, is not going to practice. If they're convinced, then uh, they're not going to do anything because they're already doing everything. And as a result, they do nothing. It's kind of is paradoxical, or it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, in a sense, or it, it's defeating. Uh, someone who has free will, a view of free will, is going to butt up against, um, very much against reality, when they can't control certain things. The the perspective, or the approach that we take in Buddhism, is of course to be mindful and to observe and to learn and to see more clearly um, in regards to this very important topic. I'm not, it's not that we should dismiss uh, the topic, it's that the approach has to be different. The approach has to be in terms of experientially finding the truth, uh, not to create, create a theory, not to have some belief there is a self, there is no self, um, that we have free will, the universe is deterministic, that sort of thing. But to understand, to see, to appreciate, to become familiar. Familiar is not strong enough a word, but I, I don't know if we even have the right words in the English language. To, um, to dwell in, in reality, right? To really be in tune with reality, right? the reality of, of non-self, right? that all dhammas are non-self, the Buddha put it that way. But what does that mean? That means that the things that we observe, or the, all the aspects of experience, the, the reality of things, is non-self, is impermanent, is suffering, is non doesn't have the qualities of being an I, being an entity, of uh, being me, like a quality, of, or of being a mine, of a possession. So this, this, is, I mean, this isn't a deeply philosophical or intellectual uh, framework or, or philosophy. It's talking about things like pain. Pain is not self. What does that mean? It means you can't control the pain. It means our relationship with the pain in terms of trying to control it is a cause for stress and suffering. When we have things we like, we try to keep them, make them stay, make them come again. Uh, causes stress and suffering. It, we, it, it, it's a failure. It's out of touch with reality. When you start to observe the pain, just observing it as it is, when you observe pleasure, observing it just as it is, uh, you lose this, because you see it coming and going, as this person did. So their only real fault, I would say, this person, or not fault, the problem that this person is having, is this doubt which arises from a wrong approach. Their approach is to try and figure it out, to, to, to find a theory that's in tune with reality. Theories are not reality. I mean, theories are mental activity, something that you have to let go of. Uh, and, and so, w when, you, when you see these things, or when you see experiences, emotions coming and going, that's enough. Let it be just that. Let your appreciation of the way things are be what it is, because then no one can ever tell you differently. Uh, but don't don't cultivate views is the point when you have a view like oh does that mean I'm observing this or is this not me is this just more mechanistic realities all of that is, is you know th what's going on at that moment is more thinking more experiences and not very good ones because they're caught up in doubt uh, speculation and they're based on our defilements our, our beliefs in self our views of self our our perceptions of self. And they aren't mindfulness, they aren't reality. So when you just say to yourself, pain, pain, there's no self that could ever be a part of that. Right? The, the idea of self has no place there. That, that activity, that approach, is nothing to do, has nothing to do with views of self or theories of self. The, the importance of self that the Buddha taught, non-self, 
is to see that things are not what we thought they were, that they are not me, they are not mine, they are not I. As you watch them, you'll see they're out of your control. There, see, you'll see that the control that you thought you had, uh, the, the thoughts of control that had arisen before are, were, were based on uh, speculation, delusion, lack of uh, observation, lack of clear vision of how things are. You'll see that, uh, as this person says, they come and they go, and they come of themselves. And, and the result, you know, what, what it means to be enlightened, is that you uh, have let go. You have no sense of trying to control things or trying to, to force things. But you have no sense of things being deterministic either. There's no idea like that. Right? There's something flawed about the idea of determinism because of its very approach. It's, um, it's a poor uh, way of using your mind, or even to use, of course, using language, right? I'm using the words you and I and so on. We can't avoid it. But I, I don't think it should be very hard to understand what I'm saying. I think the difficulty comes from um, getting around our own views and our own beliefs and, and our, our way of looking at things that's so very caught up in entities and things and, and also um, theories and views. And all I'm saying, and all we're saying in Buddhism, is to observe to practice, to be here now, right? to not have any of the baggage. Like when I say be here now, I'm not saying you, let there be a self here and now. Right? It doesn't take self uh, or free will or determinism or anything like that to be here now, uh, to, to be mindful, to, to see things clearly, for there to arise clarity and insight. So uh, I don't know if that makes it clearer, but uh, just to be clear, I'm not trying to make it clear. We're not trying to leave, have you leave this video, have you watch this video, leave, go back to your life thinking, uh, he gave me the right answer. No, I'm not giving you an answer. I'm giving you, we're giving you a direction, right? a way to see things more clearly, a way to free yourself from the need for theories, the need for speculation, the need for dogma. And that's what we teach in mindfulness meditation practice. If you're interested, if you really want an answer, uh, please read my booklet on how to meditate. I think it gives a good basic understanding of how to be mindful and, and, and try it and practice and see. And I can pretty much guarantee you'll have no use for theories and views and, and, and ideas like that. You'll just be mindful. Okay, thank you all for